Council Clerk is out, and that's due to scheduling because we had the snowstorm on Tuesday evening. So, um, Vice President Picciarelli? Uh, Councilor Bays. Present. Councilor Donato. Present. Councilor Falkoff. Present. Councilor Palumba. Present. Councilor Cunellas. Present. Councilor Feltner. Present. Councilor Woodland. Right, he's not in here in this evening. Uh, Council President Sedaris. Present. Council Vice President Picciarelli. Present. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is public forum. If anyone would like to speak on any issue that's not already on the agenda for a public hearing, you're welcome. Seeing none, we move on to the examination of minutes. Can I get a motion on the minutes of January 8th? Um, Mr. President, I make a motion that we uh, adopt the minutes of January 8th as written. Uh, there's a, uh, three minor corrections. The first, on page one, it says agenda instead of minutes. On page five, um, uh, item D, uh, we had agreed to amend the report, and the old report is linked to the um, minutes instead of the new amended report. And also on page six, item E, the same thing. We had amended the uh, committee report, and the link on the minutes is the all the report, not the amended report. So I recommend we approve it with those three corrections. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those, uh, Councilor Falkoff. Just want to thank Councilor Picciarelli for looking at it so carefully. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes of January 22nd. Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion that we adopt the minutes of January 22nd as written. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Next item is President's Report. And I, I want to just take a minute to say, first of all, that we will be adjourning this evening in memory of two of our employees who recently passed away. And this is kind of difficult. Um, our treasurer, Nancy Heffernan, and our curriculum coordinator, Allison Donovan. Um, I, I want to start with Nancy. Nancy has worked with us for two years, and she was a wonderful employee. She contributed to a lot of things that we do here in this community. She's going to be sorely missed by her staff, by our ad administration, and us as the council. Um, and I really, um, she was taken very quickly from us. There was one thing I do want to mention that um, remembrances in her memory can go to the MSPCA at Nevins Farm in, in case anyone is interested. Um, and I also am going to say the manager will speak, but I want to speak on the next one as well. Um, as you're all very well aware, uh, Allison Donovan was killed by a hit and run accident last week. And it, the good news is it looks like this evening they found the person that did it. So. It, that's not really good news. Um, Allison has been uh, in a number of roles in our schools. Um, she was a very young woman, very bright. The, the, the staff uh, loved her. The, 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 the teachers loved her. The, the kids loved her when she was here. Um, and so we're also going to miss Allison very much. Uh, and also for her, uh, if anyone would like to make a donation, the Watertown High School Scholarship Program for the Allison Donovan Memorial Scholarship is, could go to the public schools. So we will be having a moment of silence for both of these people in memory of them at the end of the meeting. And I want to recognize the manager at this point. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, members of the town council, and uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Council President, for your kind comments about, uh, very thoughtful comments about the uh, two remarkable people. I, I'd certainly like the opportunity to speak uh, that last week and the last few days have been very emotional with the sad and sudden passing of these two remarkable people. Uh, the first one I wanted to say a few words about uh, is that 
and speak to is about Allison Donovan and what an amazing person she was to her fellow colleagues in the community. Uh, Allison was an outstanding K-8 literacy and Title I coordinator, the former Hosmer School teacher, an interim Lowell principal for the Watertown Public Schools, who cared deeply about the success and well-being of all the teachers and students with whom she worked. She will be missed. I'd like to read a quote from Dr. Galston, superintendent of schools, and a statement about Allison. It is with great sadness that we learned of the unexpected death of Allison Donovan. Ms. Donovan was a longtime educator and administrator in the Watertown Public Schools who was loved by students and staff. She brought inval invaluable knowledge, insights, compassion, and dedication to the district and was passionate about providing students with the best education possible. She will be greatly missed and our thoughts and prayers go out to her family and friends at this most difficult time. Now I want to share a few thoughts with you and talk about a remarkable person that Nancy Heffron, the town treasurer collector was to her fellow colleagues in the community. Uh, it was my privilege to appoint Nancy as a town treasurer collector for the town back in March of 2017. When Nancy was appointed, she had more than 12 years of municipal finance experience with the town of Reading. Ms. Hefferin had an extensive education background as well in finance and a solid grounding in public management. With Nancy's extensive experience and educational background, she accomplished and assisted the administration by enhancing the treasurer collector's office delivery of service and served on the municipal budget and capital budget teams. What we all agree is what's more important that Nancy also brought with her an understated manner and caring personality to this community. The council president touched on both of those uh, in his opening remarks. Although Nancy was a bit shy, she was very, very smart and played a significant role in the progress made by the administration. Nancy was devoted to her family and her many loving nieces and nephews. At last Friday's funeral, we were informed by one of her nephews that Nancy's favorite expression was, sure. Especially when her nieces and nephews ask for something, they can always count on their Aunt Nan. Nancy never said no to any of her coworkers in need as well. She would take the extra time to find a solution. She was always smiling and was well loved by everyone in town hall in all the members of the Treasurer Collector's Office, who many of them are here, here with us tonight, and I really appreciate them coming out, and they've done a wonderful job in uh, continuing the legacy of Nancy and getting things done in a very, very trying time. Nancy was admired by all she met for her professional manner, dedication, and extraordinary efforts in the discharge of her duties. Served with pride and distinction to all residents, town departments, elected officials, and state agencies. Although Nancy only worked in Watertown for a short two years, many of us felt like we knew her all of our lives. On a personal note, Nancy was one of my favorite colleagues and a dear friend. And in closing, Mr. President, members of the council, the audience here and audience at home, Allison and Nancy's presence made an impact and their absence will make a difference. They will be profoundly missed by all. The Watertown community lovingly paused to take note of this service and many contributions that truly benefited the town. We continue praying for Allison and Nancy and their families, and I end and offer a traditional Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your face. May the rains fall softly upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. God bless. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Can I get a motion to move up item 8C? So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 8C is the Committee on Public Works report regarding grant of location requests for small cellular antennae and recommendations for this utility. Council Picciarelli. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm only, this is a five page report. I'm only gonna read the highlights um, uh, to save some time. 
So the Committee on Public Works met January 15th, January 29th, and February 5th, and this report covers all three meetings. The purpose of the meetings was to perform due diligence for two extant systems petitions for small cellular antennas in the public right-of-way at 141 Palfrey Street and 550 Arsenal Street, and one AT&T new singular wireless petition for a small cellular antenna in the public right-of-way at 5 Coolidge Avenue, including an analysis of the technical issues and the permitting process with this new technology to determine an appropriate application fee and other po uh, possible conditions to be imposed and to make recommendations to the town council. Uh, the meeting started with a suggestion regarding the format of the meetings and breakdown of discussions of relevant issues. And there's also, uh, we distributed five summaries of key portions of the FCC's recent declaratory ruling in order to guide the discussion. The, uh, so on the, uh, the meeting of January 15th, uh, the first thing we did was an overview of the, dis of the issue. Uh, the FCC recently issued regulations pertaining how state and local governments can regulate small antennas. Uh, for example, how long the petition can take to be reviewed, how a municipality can charge for fees, and what it is and is not permitted from a zoning perspective. Um, the committee noted that the F FCC's emphasis on preempting the authority of a municipality to regulate the industry. Uh, number two, we discussed the fees, uh, and there are two types of fees, uh, either actual reasonable approximation of costs or the safe harbor fees that were in the uh, FCC ruling. Uh, with a motion for Council Plumba, we voted unanimously to proceed with uh, safe harbor fees for these petitions at this time. Uh, next, we moved on to discussion of technical regulations. Uh, so the, we noted the purpose of the additional local regulations are aimed at avoiding aesthetic harm, to minimize impacts to the neighborhoods and business districts, to safeguard public safety, and protect the public infrastructure investment. Uh, we focused on co-location on existing utility poles, because that's what the three uh, petitions were for. Uh, we felt that the committee felt that the antenna and its associated equipment shall not be mounted on poles that have other existing equipment, such as another wireless facility, a transformer, remotely operated electrical switching equipment, amplifiers or power supply cabinets for cable TV, uh, and the like. Uh, Furthermore, uh, the committee felt that the minimum pole height with the antenna mounting shall be 30 feet, and the antenna shall not be located with the RF field permissible, uh, maximum permissible exposure over 30 minutes uh, is more than one half, 1% uh, of the maximum allowed. The committee also noted that conditions of the poles need to be considered uh, before mounting the antennas. Uh, next, we moved on to the review of the 141 Palfrey Street petition from Extinet. We identified additional material needed uh, and some uh, corrections to the drawings. We moved on to the review of the 550 Arsenal Street Extinet petition, also requesting additional information. And finally, we reviewed the AT&T petition for 5 Coolidge Avenue and asked for some additional information. The, the two petitions agreed to bring that information to the next meeting, uh, which uh, we reconvened on January 29th. Uh, the first thing we did is uh, we reviewed a draft order for the grant of location for small wireless facilities located in the public right-of-way. This draft reflected the policy considerations made at the prior meeting, uh, discussions concerning the application fee, how further uh, approval would be needed for the upgrading of the larger equipment and replacement of the poles, removal of unused cables, and the due date for recurring fees. Minor changes to the draft were made. Both petitioners agreed to the final amended language. Council Pitch really noted this would be sent to KP Law for final review. Uh, Council Plumber made a motion that we recommend using this template uh, for future these petitions and for future petitions, and that again was voted unanimously by the committee. Uh, next, Dr. Dan uh, Donald Hayes, uh, who was AT&T's uh, consultant for and author of the RF field calculation analysis, was in attendance. He discussed the RF field calculations and exposures from the, these particular antennas and answered questions from the committee. Next, the, we moved on to the review of the Extinet petition for 141 Palfrey Street uh, and to determine if the application was complete and satisfactory. Uh, the petitioner provided additional information. However, we uh, had some questions about the height of the poll and uh, the matter was tabled to 
the next meeting so the petitioner could bring us some revised information. Uh, next, we looked at the XNet petition for 550 Arsenal Street. Is the application complete and satisfactory? The petitioner provided additional information. Uh, a new pole was installed. The antenna will be side mounted because of the high voltage primary line. Overall, the committee concluded that the petition as presented was complete, satisfactory, and reflects the goals and regulations as decided by the committee. Uh, next, we reviewed the AT&T petition for 5 Coolidge Avenue. Is the application complete and satisfactory? The petitioner provided additional information. The, overall, the committee concluded that the petition as presented was complete, satisfactory, and re reflects the goals and regulations as decided by the committee. Uh, it was the petitioner's understanding that this poll would not be replaced. Council Plumber made a motion, uh, seconded by Council Willen, to recommend that the full town council approve the revised XNF petition as presented to the committee for 550 Arsenal Street. That was voted unanimously. Council Woodland made a motion, seconded by Council Palumba, to re recommend that full town council approve the revised AT&T petition for 5 Coolidge Avenue. That motion also passed unanimously. The meeting adjourned, and we reconvened again on February 5th. Uh, we began by uh, continuing the discussions of the petition for 141 Palfrey Street. The petitioner had provided re revised drawings and additional information. The height of the antenna is now listed at 27 feet, up 20 feet from the prior meeting. While not at the desired 30 feet, it is not possible in this specific location, given the NSTAR safety spacing requirement when near a high voltage primary line. The committee felt this height, given the circumstance, was reasonable and in compliance with the regulations as previously discussed. Council Palumba made a motion seconded by Council Woodland to recommend the full town council approve the revised Exonet petition for 141 Palfrey Street, and that motion passed unanimously. Next, the committee reviewed an updated template for grant of location uh, that was edited by KP Law. The committee agreed with the changes by KP Law and had some minor grammatical edits noted. Next, we talked about formalizing requirements, fees, application, and approval process. Uh, we noted that the goal of the committee was to develop a process that is easy for applicants to understand and follow, easy for staff to administer, easy for the town council to process and approve, informative and transparent to the public, and in compliance with the FCC regulatory shot clock. To that end, the committee agreed to the following. A, Start with the work done to date on the standard template and lessons learned from the first three petitions and work backwards to create the application process. B, as done with other matters, create an ordinance with the basics and a regulation with the details. C, have the Public Works Committee make a general technical recommendation on how to proceed. D, have Mr. Magoon and Mr. Mee provide input into the process for staff. E, have Mark Rich with KP Law provide best practices and initial recommendations. And finally, authorize the, uh, the chair to meet with Mr. Magoon, Mr. Mee, and Mr. Rich to compile information and bring it back as a first draft for the committee. Council Woodland made a motion, seconded by Council Plumber, that the town council refer jointly to the Public Works and Rules and Ordinances Committees the development of an ordinance and regulations for small wireless facilities in a public right of way. And that motion passed unanimously. So there's uh, 40 pages of attachments to this report, Mr. President, and that's uh, the report. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. I just want to take this opportunity before I recognize Councilor Canellas to thank this committee for um, the number of meetings and the time spent putting this together for us. Um, I, I truly appreciate it, and uh, I think we're, we're in a good place now. So, Councilor Canelo. <laughs> Councilor Donato. Thank you, Councilor Canellis. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, I just want to thank the committee. This is a very dense, technical topic, and the uh, committee did a lot of work in preparation for these meetings. Um, as Councilor Picciarelli noted, uh, the FCC really preempts a lot of uh, municipal authority, but uh, in the areas in which we do have some discretion, I thought the, the committee did a good, good job of exercising that to the fullest extent. I also thought that this uh, application process um, hopefully will 
be a model for future applications. I thought it was, uh, and both of the applicants are here tonight, I thought uh, there was a lot of give and take between the applicants as well as the committee, um, and I think at the end we reached something that worked for all parties involved. So I thought, uh, despite the fact it was a very dense technical topic, I think the, the committee did a really good job uh, addressing the issues. Thank you. Councilor Callis. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to commend the committee um, I attended the first meeting and was unable to attend the uh, subsequent two, but very technical, and uh, I commend the entire committee, but special kudos to Councillor Picciarelli for um, once again doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work uh, to make the, the meetings flow easier and to bring all of the information um, in a concise manner that's understood by everyone that would be in attendance, uh, not only the folks who have the technical savvy, but some of us lay people who um, really need to uh, be uh, brought into line with what they're actually talking about. So I commend everyone. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Pitcher? I just, I did, in my rush to read the uh, <laughs> report, I did neglect to mention that Councilor Palumba is the vice chair of the committee, and Council Woodland, who's not here, is the secretary. And I really want to thank Council Woodland for pulling together these uh, meeting minutes uh, in a very timely manner. So, any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And a motion to refer jointly to public works and rules and ordinances the development of an ordinance and regulations for small wireless facilities in a public right of way. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Back to the agenda. We're going on to unfinished business. 6A is the continuation of the November 13th, 2018 agenda item 6B, which was tabled after the public hearing for a vote on a petition for a grant of location for Extanet Systems, Inc., to construct and operate a small wireless facility in the public right-of-way at 141 Palfrey Street. I'm going to recognize Vice President Picciarelli for this. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, there are uh, two documents attached to the agenda. The first is the grant of location based on the template that the committee approved. It has 15 conditions in it. And the second is the, the document that contains uh, the seven documents that uh, comprise the revised uh, application. So um, I don't know if we just, uh, at this point, motion. I'll just make a motion that we uh, approve this order for grant of location for a uh, small wireless facility in the public right of way at 141 Paul Free Street. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Given the comprehensiveness of your report, it's obvious there's not much of a discussion. All, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 6B is a continuation of the November 13, 2018 agenda item 6C tabled after the public hearing for a vote on a petition of a grant of location for Extanet Systems, Inc. to construct and operate a small wireless facility in the public right of way at 550 Arsenal Street, Vice President Picciarelli. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Again, there's two documents attached. One is the grant of location with 15 conditions uh, as uh, developed in the committee, and the second is uh, the uh, revised application with 10 uh, documents attached um, that uh, as uh, submitted to the committee. So I'll make a motion that we approve the grant of location for a small wireless facility located in the public right of way at 550 Arsenal Street. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item is item seven, which is public hearings. And it's a public hearing and vote on a petition for a grant of location for new singular wireless PCS LLC AT&T to construct and operate a small wireless facility in the public right of way at 5 Coolidge Avenue. Before I open it up for a public hearing, I'm going to ask Vice President Picciarelli to go over this one as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So there are two, again, two documents attached to this. Uh, first is the grant of location uh, based on the template that we developed in the committee meeting. That one has 14 uh, conditions on it uh, because there is no new pole being installed. Um, and then the second uh, document is uh, a compilation of uh, 10 uh, documents that comprise a revised application uh, that was presented to the committee and is what the grant application is based on. Okay. 
This is a public hearing, so if there's any member of the public that wishes to be heard on this particular grant of location, please step up. Did you want to speak? Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Dolan from the law firm of Brown Rudnick um, here on behalf of the applicant. I first uh, want to thank uh, uh, Councillors Picciarelli, uh, Palumbo, and Woodland for their fine work uh, on the small cell uh, regulations and process here in Watertown. We've been in front of most cities and towns in the Commonwealth, and your councillors here are as thoughtful as any we've uh, been uh, in front of so far. So thank you for the collaborative uh, work we did on this. Uh, as previously alluded to, uh, my client uh, is proposing a small cell antenna installation on a utility pole uh, at Coolidge Ave, um, right near the uh, uh, UPS building. Uh, this uh, small cell facility is mounted, will be mounted on an existing Eversource utility pole in the public right away. and. Like uh, Extinet, uh, AT&T's RF engineers targeted the proposed location due to high data demands uh, on its network. And the macro sites that AT&T has, which are their large antenna facilities, either on a tower or on a, a rooftop of a building with seven, eight-foot antennas, um, are not providing adequate data capacity and coverage in this area for the uh, uh, residents of Watertown. Uh, we're proposing a small antenna at the top of the utility pole, an equipment uh, cabinet attached to the side of the pole, uh, some related fiber optic cables, uh, an electric meter, and a shutoff button, uh, shutoff switch. Um, so in short, we're proposing this small cell facility so that AT&T can handle more data, process it faster, and uh, provide more reliable coverage to our customers here in Watertown. Is there anyone else in the general public that wish to be heard? Seeing none, I close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the grant of location for Small Wilders facility located uh, adjacent to 5 Coolidge Avenue. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you both for attending this evening. Back to committee reports. Uh, 8A is the Ad Hoc Community Preservation Interview Committee report regarding the confirmation of the appointment of Mark Kreshkevich to the Community Preservation Committee for a one-year term to expire 2020. I'm going to ask Councillor Feltner to read the report because she also wrote the report for us. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on the committee was President Mark Sedaris and as chair and counselors Falkoff, Palumba, and myself. Also present at the meeting on January 22nd was Councillor Caroline Bays. Uh, we were there to interview Mark uh, Kreshkevich to serve on the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, our discussion included questions such as how does your background and life experience fit with the duties of the CPC? Why are you primarily interested in serving on this committee compared to other town boards and commissions? How do you feel about the time commitment this volunteer committee may require? Please share any ideas and concerns about how this committee could best function, especially in times of conflict or competing priorities. What might the CPC initially need to get up and running? What ideas do you have for the CPC to engage the public and to ensure a community-driven process and generate excitement about projects? A chair convened the meeting with Mark Kreshkevich, who described some of his involvement with open space issues. Uh, he was an environmental planner for Massachusetts starting back in the 1960s. He also continues to work on economic development projects overseas, and he tends to think that housing and economic development go together. It is hard work developing affordable housing. Mark is eager to learn about building and updating our current open space plan discuss findings from recently convened meetings about affordable housing, study our economic development plan and other documents, and reflect on what has been accomplished so far in order to help us decide where we go from there. Mark looks forward to uh, each CPC member gaining more exposure to the different areas and all the three areas, open space, affordable housing, and historic preservation, to help cross-fertilize everyone's ideas about these topics. 
His experience in serving on larger committees is that a variety of personalities end up balancing each other out through the decision-making process. He feels it is also important to learn about points of view from the community, including about historic preservation through upcoming CPC public engagement work. One idea that he shared with us for stimulating conversation included producing brief summaries on each of the three topic areas to be aware of what Watertown has accomplished so far as a kind of base for them to start from. He expects the Department of Community Development and Planning would also share ideas about public planning exercises. And Mark agreed that there should be a dedicated CPC website or page, and we should look at other more interactive ways to hear different viewpoints. He has also begun some of his own research looking at how communities have used a two-step process for project applications. Some of the proposals may need to use funds to get reviewed by experts, and they would help us determine not only the feasibility, but how public interest would be served, preserved, and what the investment would look like. Mark Krushkevich <coughs> expressed interest in working with the town staff and legal counsel, and he wondered about the workload and access to uh, folks. He is generally available as he is retired from working full time, but he hopes to know scheduled meetings ahead of time as he still travels. Uh, and the action item of the committee was to appoint Mark Krushkevich to the CPC for a one year term expiring February 1st, 2020. It was made by Councillor Falkoff, seconded by Councillor Palumba, and approved 4 0. 7 o'clock uh, was a motion to adjourn by Palumba and seconded by myself. And I respectfully submit this report with an attachment of a memo from the town manager, Michael Driscoll, on December 17, 2018, along with the administration interview questions posed to all applicants. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And can I get a motion to confirm the appointment of Mark Kreshkevich to the Community Preservation Committee for a one-year term to expire on February 1st, 2020. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Typically, I would wait until the announcement section, but I just I think it's appropriate that the first meeting, that I announce that the first meeting of the Community <laughs> Preservation Committee will take place uh, next Thursday night, February 21st, here in the Council Chamber at 7 o'clock. Next item on the agenda is 8B, which is a Committee on Media and Public Outreach Report regarding the Informational Technology Assessment RFP Next Steps and Proposals, Council of Palumba. Thank you. Uh, the committee <coughs> meeting was called to order at 515. We were in the third floor conference room in Town Hall. My president was myself, <coughs> Councilor Feltner, Vice Chair, Councilor Bay, Secretary. Also present were residents David Stokes, uh, chair of the uh, Stormwater Advisory Committee, uh, Stephanie uh, Venzelos, uh, uh, Watertown's Community Health uh, Wellness Program Manager, uh, Anthony Campagna, uh, the member of the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee, and Nancy Hammett. The initial discussion concerned the recent Information Technology Assessment, RFP. While it is quite extensive and did include an inventory use of social media, members felt its focus was on technology infrastructure and related to hardware and software capacity and did not address communication strategy and communication engagement, nor specifically address personnel capacity. It was suggested that whoever is awarded the contract arrange to meet with members of the town council, department heads and employees, members of the existing boards and commissions to guarantee the assessments address a broad array of communication and training needs. The committee briefly discussed the need for a communication director and noted that the base of uh, that based on the work of the committee and the presentation of resident Mike Ward at previous meetings, Council Bays and Council Palumba recommended in their budget guidelines that the town hire a communications engagement uh, <coughs> director. Council, I ask that the committee and the residents attending uh, to turn their attention to discussion of next steps and possible proposals to present to the full town council. It should be noted that the ideas, suggestions, and comments below are not attributed to the specific individuals, but they do include the helpful comments from the residents attending the meeting. One, the website should include a notify me category for the town manager 
that would include, among other things, the miscellaneous items that counselors and other town employees regularly receive. In addition, all boards and commissions should be provided the opportunity to have a notify me category. Two, consider developing a communication engagement survey. It was noted that this could involve significant time and energy and may involve creating different formats, translations into several languages, and an intense outreach effort to convince folks that it is worth their time to complete <coughs> the survey. Three, arrange for Everbridge to make a presentation to the full town council about the social engagement and emergency notification tools that are available through the town's existing contract. Four. Post job descriptions for boards and committees and town positions on the website, as well as in the appropriate notify me category. Investigate the cost and the feasibility of instituting a 311 system, publishing a directory of all employees with names and extensions, creating a town council quarterly newsletter, and creating easy access to counselors' requests for information and the subsequent response. Develop strategic guidelines and training tools for town organizations, boards, and commissions about how to communicate in a consistent and frequent way in order to engage the community. Explore the creation of standardized platforms for the different town organizations, committees, and commissions to plug into. For example, a standardized newsletter format or a survey, survey platform would be helpful. Revise the committee's earlier Revise the committee's earlier consideration of creating one short-term goals. I'm sorry, revisit the committee's earlier consideration of creating short-term goals, such as making more effective use of the tools the town already has through Everbridge and the Notify Me categories. Medium-term goals, such as <clears throat> active participation employees and, in volunteer, and volunteers in the IT assessment, using 311, creating a newsletter, and so forth. Long-term goals, create a such as creating a communication participation strategy and action plan and funding a communication and engagement director. The committee then turned to creating proposals for approval by the full town council. Action items. The committee recommends that the town council ask the town manager to require that the awardee of the information technology assessment contract interview all members of the council, town council, as well as interview members of existing boards and commissions. Action item, the second item, the committee recommends that the town council ask the town manager to have the, no to have the notify me category of council changed to town council and to create a category of town manager to allow him to communicate directly through notify me. Action item three, the committee recommends that the town council invite through the town council president a representative of Everbridge to give a presentation to the town council on the available emergency notification and community engagement tools. And action item four, the committee recommends that the town council ask the town council clerk to create an, an agendas and minutes link, an, an agendas and minutes link for each town council committee on the town council web page of the website. So the committee's agendas and minutes are easily accessible. All three motions passed three to zero. Um, meeting agenda at 712, and I want to thank Councillor Bays for uh, creating the minutes. Can I get a motion to accept the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Can I make a? Yes, Councillor Falcon. I'd like to make a picky correction. Under action items, the second one, where it says him, could we make that a small h? Thank you. We, we should probably just change it to allow the town manager, whoever that may be. Uh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Any other comments, Councilor Donato? I, I just have two. Um, I was not able to attend the meeting um, just so that I'm aware if we are contacted in the future by uh, whatever uh, company uh, 
is chosen to do the IT assessment when, uh, and I guess maybe also uh, to help the town manager when he makes this ask of that company, what exactly would these, the interviews of the town counselors or the town staff, what sort of information would the committee like? I would think that this would be appropriate when we take up the action item. Okay. Councilor. Okay. This is just on the report itself. I'm happy to hold it. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. Uh, the first action item is that the town council asked the town manager to require a wardee of the informational technology assessment contract to interview all members of the town council as well as to invite members of each existing board and commission to be interviewed. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Donato. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, and I apologize for uh, right. raising it out of order. I, I, I'm just looking for some guidance from the, the committee as to what exactly, uh, if these interviews were to take place, what information um, the committee would like the, the company that performs the IT assessment, what sort of information they would be looking for. Councilor Palumbo. Um, Councilor, did you Council, want? Councilor Feldner. Yep. Oh, okay. I was just going to speak to the... Uh, question, Mr. President. Um, it, it's part of their, we didn't want to assume that they would include counsel. So when the, whoever comes in and does the assessment, you know, they, by standard practice, I think they speak with the staff and um, we just want to be sure that the council are as representatives of the public and that people who serve on boards and commissions are also in, invited to attend so that they can hear from the people that are actively involved in public engagement. And um, so when they do their data gathering, how, you know, however they set that up, that it's uh, sure that they get a public perspective, if you will. Thank you. Councilor Falkoff. Uh, um, I, I'm confused about this RFP completely. And has it gone out already? And if so? Was my next, I was, I was going to ask Mr. Tracy to address <laughs> that before we took the words right out of your mouth. <clears throat> Tom, members thank of, you. Um, Mr. President, uh, members of the council, the RFP has gone out. We've gotten, I think it's six responses in the committee's evaluating of who, which firms will be brought in for interview purposes. So I assume it's therefore too late to include additional direction for the awardee. Since there's no award yet, no, not, it's not too late. I, I do think that the, the intent was that we would have them um, at least discuss um, or interview the, the counselors or have a discussion with the counselors. Okay, so this is not a additive. No. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this action item? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That the council ask the town manager to have the notify me category of council change to town council and to create a category of town manager to be able to communicate directly through Notify Me. So moved. Second. Is any discussion? <laughs> Councilor Donato. I guess the only concern I have on the town manager category, not that I'm opposed to the idea because I think it's a very good one and I find the miscellaneous items to be very informative and very topical. I guess the only concern I have is um, Sometimes included in the miscellaneous items, uh, there's personal information, whether or not we're responding to an issue a town resident had, and you know maybe when that resident sent the email either to a counselor or the town manager, they weren't expecting it to be uh, made public townwide. So I guess that would be my only hesitation. Well, I would, I would suggest that this doesn't require every document that the manager produces to go out through Notify Me. I would suggest that the manager, this is giving the manager some discretion on what he's putting out through the Notify Me process. And Councilor Palumbo, if you could. No, no, thank you. I, and I appreciate uh, Councilor Donato's comment because um, he, he was referring, I think, to the minutes that were reading, uh, were read. Um, and I was actually one, the one counselor uh, who really thought that the miscellaneous items, which I think are tremendous, and provide an enormous amount of information from my, from, from my perspective, they provide an enormous amount of information and I think would be very helpful. Counselors Bayes and Counselor um, 
uh, Feltner, however, felt uh, very much like you did, Councillor President Sedaris, um, that we should leave the latitude of what the, council, the town manager decides to put on uh, his, because it would be his, more notify me, category, up to him. Uh, I, I, uh, so I think that the, the, the filling of, of the two of the members of the council, that we should have this, should provide this flexibility. Are there any other comments? Councilor Falcoff. Yeah, can the wording of the motion be changed um, in accordance with the previous comment so that it's not him with a capital H, but small him or her? We will make sure that's changed. Thank you. And Councilor Cornelis. Thank you. Um, I also concur with um, Councilor Donato's uh, comment about uh, um, um, you know, some of the sensitive issues that are that are sent through miscellaneous, and I know that it's now been addressed, but uh, I also thought of that particular issue, and there are emails, there are names, there are um, addresses, there are many issues that uh, go through um, miscellaneous communication that should not be broadly disseminated, so I know that the town manager will use his discretion. Councilor Feltner. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, just a brief note in that we were hoping that this could perhaps empower the town manager's office to reach more residents who perhaps, for example, don't own property and wouldn't get a tax bill and find, would find the newsletter is very helpful. So that's, again, we're not directing the town manager specifically what to send, but um, that was just one example. Or, you know, if there wanted to be whatever comments about, um, I mean, I'm sorry, generating excitement about boards and commission opening or the summer concerts or whatever. So again, discretion of the town manager's office. Are there any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item is that the town council invite through the town council president a representative of Everbridge to give a presentation to the town council on the available emergency notification and community engagement tools. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the, uh, oh. well, I wanted to make a comment. I, oh, go no, ahead, I'm not please. opposed. No, please. I'm sorry. Make a comment. I, I just uh, want to say that we, when we had the uh, uh, representatives come to the meeting and speak, um, I just, it was quite fascinating how much we could get out of Everbridge uh, that we already have in its contract. I mean, it's not that these things w will require additional funds, but they have a lot of tools that we just haven't been able to. Uh, which are some of them relatively new, uh, new in their, uh, right, Tom? Some of them are relatively new. But uh, some of them are, it would be a great opportunity, I think, because uh, to Council President Sedaris's issue, which we, he addressed, he asked us to address quite a while ago about how we could be notified when emergencies took place. That can be done, actually, um, and we'll, if you allow this, we will learn about that. Are there any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. The council asked the town clerk, council clerk, to create an agendas and minutes link for each town council subcommittee on the town council page of the website so that committee agendas and minutes are easily accessible. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I do think this will be a very helpful way where people can just get a link and I've been, I already started working, speaking to Marilyn about this, so um, this more formalizes it. Councilor Feltner. Thank you. I, I just, uh, for, to let the public know that the assumption is this will be coordinated with our IT manager and will, the minutes and agendas will also be linked internally with our website for archival uh, pages so the if you go to the archive page for minutes and Jenna, the committees will also show up there as well eventually if this passes. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you all. New business. Any new business to come before the council this evening? Seeing none, communications from the town manager. And the first is a request for confirmation of reappointment to the Board of Health. Mr. Manager. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, members of the council. Tonight I'm bringing forward uh, on the provisions of the Home Rule Charter and the Town Council Ordinance uh, related to the process of appointments to town boards and commissions and committees. Uh, bringing forward a reappointment to the Board of Health, which requires council confirmation. 
The reappointment would be as follows, Mr. Richard Arnold at 23 Gleason Street. The term would go to the first Monday in uh, February, February 7, 2022. That's under general laws. That's why that date is a little different than we normally see. Uh, Mr. President, members of the council, under the um, council rules, this uh, request for confirmation of the uh, reappointment of the Board of Health would be referred to the community on human services for their review and report back to the full council. Thank you. The next item is a item B, which is a bicycle and pedestrian committee presentation. Mr. Manager. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Members of the council, as indicated, uh, we forward correspondence on February 7. Uh, it was uh, correspondence from Mr. Magoon, Director of Community Development Planning, Assistant Town Manager, related to a bicycle pedestrian committee presentation to town council. It's a follow up to a brief conversation with town council president Sideris. Uh, bringing this up tonight and respectfully requesting the matter be referred to committee for a further review and consideration. Mr. President. Thank you. Can I get a motion to refer this to the Public Works Subcommittee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 10C is the Massport Community Advisory Committee work to address airplane noise. Mr. Manager. Again, Mr. President, uh, members of council, we forward correspondence on February 7 from Mr. Magoon related to the Massport Community Advisory Committee work to address airplane, airplane noise. Uh, as a follow-up to a brief discussion with the town council president, respectfully ask this uh, matter be referred to committee for further review and consideration. Mr. President. Thank you. Can I get a motion to refer this to the state, federal, and regional government committee? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Manager, do you have anything else that's not listed? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, two or three items here, Mr. President, members of the council. The first thing I wanted to do is thank and wish everyone at the residence in Watertown Square a very happy Valentine's Day. I was in a meeting this afternoon, and they dropped off homemade cookies today to share, so they kind of made our day, and I think many of the councilors, have, it's in the back room, so enjoy. Uh, but I do want to, I, I made a, a, Masha had indicated to the folks that I would bring this up under uh, communications from the manager, and I do appreciate the thoughts, and, uh, and I hope all of them are having a very happy Valentine's Day at the, at the residence in Watertown Square. Next item is the town hall will be closed on uh, this coming Monday, February 18th, for President's Day. And the last item was a um, news flash we put out this afternoon that, uh, that perhaps would put in uh, in the future, maybe considering also as a notify me, and it's related to the uh, signs of spring coming, which is related to the Watertown Farmers Market, is relocating to the center of town. The town is, uh, Watertown is pleased to announce that the Watertown Farmers Market will be moved to Salt and Stall Park on Main Street next to Town Hall at the start of the 2019 season. The market will be held on Wednesdays from 2.30 to 6.30 from June 12 through October 9. Additionally, uh, during the summer months, uh, where the Salt and Salt Park will rock with fun, food, and dance as the Watertown Free Summer Concert Series will return with a wonderful lineup of musical performances. One of the things that in discussion on this, we're moving the concerts from Thursdays to Wednesdays with the market. So the thought is that a lot of folks uh, may be doing some packing up to head away for the weekend, that Wednesday may be more popular than Thursday. So I do uh, hope, and those concerts will be run from 6.30 to 8 p.m., uh, and then hoping everyone get ready to celebrate the 20th anniversary of uh, the Watertown Free Summer Concerts Series, which I f it seems hard to believe it's 20 years. So just by, with respect to the farmer's market, since its inception in 2014, the market has been located at Athena Health on Oslo Street, and held on Thursdays, and in 2017, the town assumed management and operations of the market as a program of Live Wall Watertown, now under the umbrella of the community wellness programs offered through the town's health department and its key partners. The emphasis for the change uh, changes come from a customer survey data as well as informal feedback collected over the past two years. Uh, the farmer's market team is excited about the move to a more central location where many more people can easily walk to the market the park has abundant green space for uh, people of all ages to enjoy while visiting the market and watch for additional information on vendor lineup, free wellness programs, and social activities and more uh, coming in the near future. Mr. President. Thank you. Requests for information. Any requests? Councilor Cornelis. 
Thank you. Uh, this is regarding 71 Salisbury Road. And uh, my colleagues do have uh, the original communication that was uh, submitted. It was also reported in the media. And I have still to receive a response. I was told this evening that yes, I would be. But I am submitting this for the record. I'm going to read excerpts from the communication. On August the 21st, 2018, Watertown Building Permit Number BP18834 was issued to 71 Salisbury Road, LLC. The Watertown Inspector of Buildings, through the process of issuing the building permit, reviews and approves all building applications for compliance with the ninth edition of the Mass State Building Code 780. Oversight of the project development remains with the city known as the Town of Watertown through its inspectional services. There is an inherent responsibility to ensure the protection of the abutting property owners and neighborhood from encroachment, negative quality of life implications, and collateral damages associated with a valid building permit. On March 27, 2018, Mr. Fee who is one of the principals, wrote of the concerns voiced by former building inspector Ken Thompson, may his memory be eternal, of seismic activity and or vibration associated with reducing the site to street level. What structural conditions have changed on the site to allow for negation of Mr. Thompson's apprehensions? Who dictates that authorization for removal of centuries old bedrock that has anchored almost 100 year old structures on Templeton Parkway be granted without prior open dialogue with the abutters? Who is liable for monitoring the stru structural integrity of abutting properties during and after the construction process for stress cracks, shifting, and possible soil erosion? Unfortunately, Mr. Fee's written assertions to Mr. Thompson on January 31st, 2018 and March 27, 2018 of, quote, handing out flyers and have a meeting to inform abutters, unquote, did not materialize. Quote, when we get the permit. Actually, it's catch me if you can. Even sadder, Watertown's team lacked the courtesy to inform anyone of the project's magnitude under the cloak of allowing procedure for a by right building permit that does not require notification. Where was the oversight to protect the valuable mature trees and shrubbery on the boundaries of adjoining private properties? Had the property owners not come forward to the town council to assert their rights, who would have been the wiser? It goes on. On February the 4th, I received communication from a resident of Watertown that I will share. I have not as of yet. Resident wrote, hi, Angie. I was wondering if you saw this comment posted on, goes on. The building department requires, in capitals, notification at least 10 days before work begins, stating that notice of intent must be sent to all the butters by certified mail to alert them of the commencement of the work. The developer must verify that this was done in the application. Clearly, fraud was committed. This also violates building code, and it goes on, as well as Watertown ordinance. I did not respond to the resident, but only shared my initial communication from January the 27th. I'll also be submitting this and ask for response. Residents have also been talking about the uh, special permit that would be required for an undersized lot. That's been written about in social media, so I've been told, and also voiced to me. I will be submitting that request in writing as well. So there will be three documents that I will be submitting and expect a response. I am committed to this community I respond to my constituents. I'm not going to play, place myself in the position of receiving indignant comments made to me personally. 
totally inappropriate. But I will do what has to be done for my constituents and expect the same from the, from the team in the administration. Thank you. Any other requests for information? Council Feltner. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm concerned that our updated bring your own bag ordinance that was passed uh, last September is still not on our website. I um, don't see it on the zoning page. So I would request that that be updated. And then my question, request for information would also include um, what have we accomplished to date in terms of signage developed for retailers that included instructions for the importance of cleaning reusable checkout bags as discussed throughout our deliberations and expectations of the updated ordinance. Thank you. Because it, it's supposed to, as my understanding, be effective March 1st. So. Councilor Falcon. I uh, <clears throat> uh, I have several requests this evening. Um, number one, I wonder whether the administration has any plans to follow up on the Watertown Transit Task Force report on the status of the Transportation Management Association. It was a lengthy report, and um, I'd be interested in any follow-up. Question two, Mr. Driscoll, what do you personally think about the Watertown website? Are there improvements that you personally would recommend? Three. The MOU for the Stanton Grant for the dog park at Filipello asked that the town attempt to form a friends group, as well as the attachment A requirement to form a coordinating committee that meets quarterly for the first three years of operation. What steps are being taken to honor these commitments? Four, thank you for the press release about our solar ordinance, Mr. Manager. Could you please clarify the administration's general policy and procedures for writing press releases. Where was the solar pr press release sent, and where are press releases generally sent? Five, I would like an update on the status of the building at 7375 Moore Street. Six, um, much more succinctly than Councillor Canellis' uh, helpful elaboration, I would like an update on the status of the project at 71 Salisbury Road. Seven, what is the status of the planning study that was meant to make recommendations about Ridgeland Cemetery? If it was completed, has it been presented to the council? What is the status of implementing the recommendations? If it was not completed, why not? Are there interim or additional interim measures that can be taken while we search for an appropriate staging area for DPW? And finally, number eight, how are we doing on the opioid crisis? How many opioid-related deaths were reported for Watertown in 2018, and how many times was Narcan administered? How do these numbers compare with prior years? Thank you. You'll submit that. I have three copies, and I will submit it to the council clerk and the any town manager. Request for information, Council I had one. Um, as a part of the process of developing the approval strategy for the small wireless facilities. Uh, the issue of leaning utility poles was raised as a concern. While it's understandable that old poles, which at one time were installed plumb, may begin to lean after several decades, there's also an immediate concern about new poles being installed that are leaning. As an example, uh, there's a pole at the uh, corner of Forest Street and Palfrey Street that was installed in January 2018. Uh, I will attach a photo to this, but it's leaning at quite a uh, remarkable angle. So I'm asking, uh, please provide the following information, including written responses from Eversource and Verizon. Uh, one, is the installation of the new pole number 52 slash 16 at uh, Forest Street acceptable to Eversource and Verizon? And will this new pole be removed and reinstalled plumb before any wires are transferred? Two, what is the definition of plumb being used by Eversource and Verizon for new pole installation? And what is the maximum allowable tolerance off true vertical in their installation specifications, and how is it measured? Number three, for existing leaning poles in general, how is the safe loading calculation affected by the extent of the leaning, 
and what derating factors are used when calculating the load of new cables and equipment being installed on a leaning pole. And number four, what is the maximum displacement off vertical that is considered unacceptable and thus requiring a pole to be replaced under the existing Eversource and Verizon inspection guidelines? Thank you. Any other requests? Seeing none, announcements. Any announcements? Public forum. Any member of the public wish to be heard? Before I ask for a motion to adjourn, please rise for a moment of silence for Nancy Heffernan and Allison Donovan. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Charlie, that's that thing about the farmer's market and the summer concerts. Oh.